Okay, now let's move on and into the actual body paragraphs. Um, she begins, you'll notice, not necessarily by jumping right into the topic of comparison, but again, helping to connect us to the broader issue. Currently, the failing organ procurement system in the United States uses Use, requires organ donations to be both voluntary and altruistic. Looks like there's a typo here. So she's explaining the problem. And again, we come back to these words, voluntary and altruistic. Um, altruistic, if you're not familiar with the term, means that it's something that is done without concern for personal gain or monetary reward. So right now, if you're an organ donator, you have to sign up for it. You have to choose to do it. And you know that you're not going to get any compensation. So now we move into introducing the topics. Presumed consent and organ sale differ from this present program, but in different ways. Presumed consent contrasts the voluntary component, and organ sale differs on the altruistic element. So now we're getting into the different methods for how these work. And she's trying to um, establish and, and, and let it help us understand the reason why we need to explore these new options. So in the United States, the current system means that Organ donors have to opt in on their driver's license or in some way. The problem with it is that even in the cases in which a deceased person has specifically chosen to be an organ donor, the wishes of the family can override. So then we now move into the first proposed change, which would be um, and the presumed consent, which is that unless you indicate you don't want to be a donor, it would be assumed that you wish to donate your organs. Okay, so that's the first, and that overrides the voluntary idea. Then we have um, the idea of the monetary compensation or the organ sale, um, and you'll notice that we're consistently, she's consistently connecting these proposed solutions to the current situation. So always leading or always reminding us of the context. And if you think back to the they say, I say presentation, that's really important in research that you help the reader understand the context um, in which you're presenting your information and you know what you're responding to. Notice throughout that we have paraphrased information as much as possible. It indicates that the author understands what she's reading and that even with a paraphrase, we are still including our parenthetical references. Also notice that we have two different sources blended into the paragraph. We're not relying on just one source for all of our information. Our second body paragraph opens with a transition. This is a sentence that is connecting us to the previous paragraph and easing us into a new idea. Because presumed consent and organ sale systems use different methods to procure organs, they also raise differing ethical concerns. Now we're on to that new category or new point of comparison, which is the ethics of it. All right, opponents argue that the system destroys the freedom guaranteed to American citizens, gives doctors the right to violate their bodies, and now we're introducing the author of an article. Dr. Michael Gill of the University of, Oregon, of Arizona analyzed the presumed consent system in his, in his article, etc. Now you don't always need to be that detailed, you don't always need to name the article and the author, but what is effective if you decide you are going to name the author within your text and not just in a parentheses, you should be giving qualifications. Uh, there should be something about this author that you want to really highlight in terms of their credibility or their, their history or their involvement with the topic, something that is going to make us um, need to know more about this person and, and makes that person's name significant. Um, she is setting him up so that she can then introduce the fact that he is quoting yet another researcher, this Dr. Klug. So um, the quote that we will have here is not Gill's words, it's the words of Dr. Klug in an article written by Gill. So she's making, helping to make that clear to her reader. Notice also APA style, she said analyzed past tense. We refer to information from our research in past tense. Now, finally, one last note here with APA style. She has a very long quotation from the original article, from the article by Gill. It is set apart in a block, which means it's all tabbed over. 
whenever you have a quotation that is 40 words or more, so in other words, you're copying 40 words exactly from the original, they need to be blocked over, they need to be tabbed in, as she has done here. They would not need to be in quotation marks because the formatting of the tab indicates that this is quoted material. You'll notice she has the little single quotation marks here because what she has copied was quoted in the original article. So in the original article, there would have been quotation marks around this. So she does have to recreate those, and so that's why the single quotes. Okay, so this is the first half of the second body paragraph. It deals with the idea of presumed consent. She follows by summarizing a little bit, or paraphrasing a little bit of Gill's argument that continues in his article, and um, he argues that Unless an individual states that they don't want to be interfered with, it's um, not a crime for their bodies to be violated through organ harvesting. He seems to obviously be against the topic. So she's paraphrased him, she's credited his argument, and then she has commented on it. We have her interpretation of his position. Then we have a transition to the other topic to the idea of organ sale. So words like unlike and rather let us know that she's moving now to something else. Unlike presumed consent, organ sale does not interfere with autonomy. Um, it is voluntary, bringing that word in again, however it is not altruistic and she's going on to explain what happens with the idea of organ sales. Again quoting or paraphrasing uh, her, her uh, sources here and ending it with her own statement, her own insight. Okay, so be sure that as you are bringing in this outside information, you're not relying on the quotations or the paraphrases to speak for themselves. Your reader might not interpret things the same way that you do. So it's very important that you have your interpretive statements within the paragraphs to let us know how you want us to think about this information that you have presented third body paragraph goes into the third category of comparison, the results. The only way either of these two solutions, presumed consent or organ sale, could be implemented despite their ethical consequences is if they solve the organ shortage. Notice how she again has kind of linked us to the previous paragraph and yet is moving us forward into the final topic or the final category of comparison. So she's established the focus and she will go in to discuss the results of presumed consent um, efforts that have been tried in different countries. Now notice she's always discussing presumed consent first. That is consistent with an alternating structure, AB, AB. So because presumed consent was the first thing mentioned in the introduction, within every point of comparison that has to come up first. So we talk about presumed consent, what has happened in these other countries, and notice that we have again two sources, we're not relying on just one source to prove our point because doing so indicates that you either haven't done enough research or that maybe that source is the only one who had these results or thinks this way, um, which could mean then that they might call into question their credibility. All right, so we have multiple sources evaluating the effectiveness of this, uh, this program, this idea of presumed consent. Okay, the paragraph continues. On the other hand, uh, to indicate that we're moving on to a new topic, which is the organ sale, so it's a transition within the paragraph, not a new paragraph, but switching gears a little bit within a paragraph. We're establishing the credentials of Dr. Jeremy Chapman. He's the president of the International Transplantation Society. Okay, so again, if you want to introduce an author, you want to do so only when there is some important piece of information about that author that you can share within the essay. Again, we have a long quotation that is blocked off from the main body and notice it's introduced here with the colon. Uh, this time the quotation is not re-quoting someone from an article, so we don't need any quotation marks around it there. 
and we're not ending with the quotation we're ending with the author's comments about the topic it's so very very important that you don't end with someone else's words but that you have your own strong closing statement at the end of a paragraph to really clarify what you have just presented and to make sure that you're presenting your interpretation of things. And notice how this is done without ever having to say, I think, or in my opinion, or use any of those first person references. It can, you can convey an opinion and you can convey a, a certain bias, if you will, without having to use the word I. It's all a matter of uh, your word choice and the connotations of the words that you include. And the final video will then look at how do we conclude this essay and uh, just again a refresher on the references page.